Hello, welcome. Um, lovely to see you all and uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, tonight um, we're going to, I'm going to talk briefly for about 20 minutes or so on the Taurus new moon and especially the significance right at the moment with what's going on. Now, um, I'm not an astrologer, <laughs> um, but I am a teacher, uh, naturally a teacher and a facilitator. So that's my role. So what I have done is I've gleaned information from several sources, um, from Lucius Trust, website from Philip Lindsay, who's an esoteric astrologer's newsletter on the Taurus New Moon, um, and discussions with Ted Capstick, who's also an esoteric astrologer, and I believe we have an astrologer in the audience as well. Ted is hoping to join us. Um, he's having computer difficulties and may not be able to, so uh, hopefully, but when we come to the question session at the end, if I can't answer your questions, I'll write them down, we'll save them for Ted to answer um, perhaps next week. So the format of this evening is we have a short talk and then I'll guide you through a group meditation. Uh, and this is a meditation especially to invoke the love and light uh, pouring down into our own beings and then out to into humanity. Um, so it's a service meditation, but it, I will guide you through it. It's a visual meditation. Um, and then we will, we will um, say the great invocation at the end of that, if you're happy with that. And then we'll pause briefly just before eight o'clock so that you can go and um, clap to support the NHS carers and workers. And then we'll come back just after that and there'll be an opportunity if you have any questions um, or comments or um, you know, want to add to anything that I've been able to, to bring to your attention. So that's the plan, we'll see how it goes. Um, the Taurus new moon is today, um, 3.25 this morning in Britain. Um, AM if you are up and the new moon um, we've got some interesting energies going on at the moment because we have the new moon today yesterday was the celebration of Earth Day uh, many different celebrations all around the world and Taurus is an Earth sign um, so that's no coincidence today in the UK is also St George's Day uh, and St. George's Day is a national day, a celebration of what it means to be British, but also a celebration of the energy of virtuous selflessness. He was a martyr who conquered his fear, symbolized by the dragon, uh, and saved the princess uh, that symbolizes the soul. So it's a time we're called forth as a nation in selfless service, to the greater good, remembering our connection to the earth and remembering what is important because the earth energy being grounded in the earth energy is very much about being grounded in what is important. Um, and Taurus, as I'll speak a bit later on, Taurus is very much bringing the light of illumination to what is important, what's going on and what's important. Now, I just want to talk briefly about the cycle of the moon and the opportunities um, for spiritual growth and development and the opportunities for meditation within that cycle. Um, the moon is a powerful force on our planet. Um, it's an energy, the cycles of the moon can move the oceans on our planet. So our planet is about 70% water and the moon causes the tides. It's able to cause that movement of the water. Now our bodies are about 70% water. So it's pretty naive to think that we wouldn't be affected by the energy of the moon. Uh, many people are affected physically. Most people, whether they are aware of it or not, are affected emotionally, mentally, uh, spiritually, psychically by the moon's energy. Uh, 
So the brief, briefly, the moon cycle. So the new moon, and we talk about the new moon period as the two days coming up to the, the new moon day, which is today. So the two, two previous days, and then two days after. So it's a sort of a five days um, window of opportunity. And at the new moon, this is very much the energy of change, of bringing into being something new, of birthing new ideas, of um, seeing things differently. It, it's, it's a fresh light energy. Um, it's the energy at the moment in the UK of spring. So that energy is highlighted. Um, the new moon uh, seeds, uh, this particular new moon, this Taurus new moon is a really important one because it is seeding ideas for the full moon coming up. So what happens is in the new moon is the time where we start to make plans, we plant the seeds of change. And then between the new moon and the full moon is where we start to implement and put into action those plans. What happens at the full moon uh, the full moon can be a sort of a, um, a deep, it can be a dark energy, uh, it's a deeply feminine energy to go right down into the womb of the earth and um, to go deep into the unconscious. And the, at the time of the full moon, often um, issues, especially emotional relationship type issues that we need to heal or address come up. And it will be under the auspices of whatever particular zodiac sign um, that energy vibration that's around. It's almost like the, the moon and the zodiacal, zodiacal energies will go deep into your unconscious and draw out the particular aspects of you that need healing to bring growth and, and spiritual development on your path. So some people find the full moon um, quite an emotional time. A lot of people don't sleep very well. A lot of people just feel restless and um, out of sorts. And it's that stirring up. It's, you know, you thought everything was sorted and you like the status quo. And then the moon go, gets in there and starts saying, no, actually, you need to address this, this and this. And then the period between the full moon and the new moon tends to be when we're um, starting to formulate the changes that we want to bring about at the new moon. Now, coming up to the new moon can be a difficult time if you didn't address the issues at the full moon and you haven't made any plans or progress with those issues. And so you can see that that can, that can stir things up. So... This particular new moon, why is it so important? Um, in the spiritual year, the spiritual year begins in Aries. So the Aries new moon, which is about the time this virus, it's about the time, I know it's, I'm an Aries soul, and um, it's when I got the virus, was pretty well bang on the new moon. Um, so Aries is the start of the new year, and it initiates the energy um, for that. It brings in Aries as a fire energy, and it brings in the energy of change for the year. And then in Taurus, we get um, the Wesak festival. So the Aries festival was Easter. We get the um, crucifixion, but more importantly, we get the resurrection. Uh, in Taurus, the Wesak festival is where we get the illumination we come to really understand what the change is required what is going on what do we need to to instigate for this particular year what is the vibration or the key note or the the soul note of this year both for us individually and for us as a collective so then when we move into Gemini, um, the festival of the Christ, it tends to be more the distribution and the enacting of that change. And that carries on through the year until we come back into Aries again, moving through the different signs and the different opportunities that they bring. So this Wesak festival is the festival um, celebrated by many different religions and beliefs and 
um, people who follow ancient wisdom teachings. And the idea is that at Wesak, this is the one time of the year, um, one golden opportunity where the energy of the being who we knew of as the Buddha, and this is a first ray will energy, comes very close to the earth and is available to us. So this is help from higher vibrations, higher energies that's coming close. And not only does the Buddha energy, but also the energy of the Christ or the Christ consciousness. And this is the second ray of love wisdom. And these two amalgamate and they become a very powerful force for change that is available, most available for mankind as an opportunity to connect with those energies. So if you like the, um, the will of God and the love wisdom energy, if mankind can step up into the energy of creative, active intelligence and work with these higher energies, we can have quite radical positive change um, individually and collectively. So WESAC is a very important time. Um, and the other thing about WESAC is it's a, a time when it brings many different faiths together and there's, there's many different group meditations and it's, um, it's a unifying time. It's not just one belief system. It's an amalgamation of many belief systems, which is important. Now, if you've read the Alice Bailey books, um, the teachings of the Master Dwell Cool, the she talks about the new group of world servers. And this is just a group of people. The definition is all those sensitive and consecrated servers of the race whose objective is world peace, who aim at establishing goodwill on earth as the basis for future living and world expansion. So this new group of world servers is a group that many people will be just going about their daily life naturally on their spiritual path, serving mankind in their particular unique way and they'll be part of this group but they may not even realize that they are they may never have heard of the term the new group of world service that doesn't matter it's more um, a subtle energy a group who are vibrating with the same sort of heart intention and enacting that that out in the world and this new group of world service is ruled by taurus so i think you it, it, it would be um, pertinent to look at what's going on at the moment at this point, because this new group of world servers, you could call them light workers in the world. You could call them people of who have open hearts, who are working from compassion, people who um, have the needs of others foremost in their um, concerns in their psyche and we are seeing a huge um, swelling of this energy we are seeing many people um, amazing amazing people doing things for others and people sacrificing and caring um, and I would say that we're seeing many people stepping up really stepping into their full expression of their light in this crisis. There's nothing like a crisis or a challenge to bring out the worst in people and to bring out the best in people. So those who can lift their vibration and hold that vibration, we're really seeing some wonderful examples of some of the best in, in humanity in those human um, attributes. Now, getting back to Taurus, Taurus, um, the archetype or the symbolism of Taurus is the Minotaur. So half animal, half human. And the Minotaur is in this maze, which is a metaphor for um, trying to work out where you are at the moment and trying to discern the state of the world. And this is very much where we are at the moment, trying to discern truth from falsehood. Um, and, it, you know, there are so much conflicting media um, opinions and it, it, we really are in this maze. Um, the maze, uh, the maze reflects the torturous twists, turns and complexities of the ramifying mind. This comes from esoteric astrology. 
um, the Alice Bailey books. So the Minotaur represents the, the shadow part of us, the untamed mind that combines with the desire of the bull and becomes a monster. So the Minotaur's maze is a labyrinth of intellectual circuits and knowledge in which seekers can become lost, devoured or dominated by their own thought forms. And we are seeing this. We really are. Um, the Minotaur's maze also describes where we are right now trying to discern truth. Um, but we're developing, we're emerging from halls of ignorance into the halls of learning. And um, many astrologers are suggesting, and many people, um, followers of the ancient wisdom teachings, are questioning whether we are going through a mass initiation as a result of this challenge. Um, I'm not going to go right into that today, but that might be something we want to come back to definitely in, in other sessions. So in this maze, we can either, we can rush around madly like a bull, like they say, like a bull in a china shop, destroying everything and not really very clear. We can go up false paths and have to run down, or we can calm down, we can slow down, we can wait for that intuitive guidance, that feeling, that's the right way to go, and navigate quite beautifully the pathways of this maze until we come to the moment of truth at the center. And this is Taurus. So Taurus is the mother of illumination and this will shed light on our current situation. We're coming, we have the opportunity, especially in the next, next two weeks to truly understand why this crisis, what it's bringing out for us, why? What can we do? What's the bigger picture? Spiritually, what is the whole basis of this? Not just the, the personality who's not enjoying it and doesn't like being isolated and is full of fear and, and is losing their income and all of that, but lifting up and looking at it from a soul's perspective, from a higher perspective. So Taurus represents the eye of the bull, the third eye, the intuitive, the illumination. Um, when you bring the, the two horns, the duality into a unity in the center and understand the truth, there is this illumination, this understanding. Taurus is very much to do with the struggles between spirit and matter. So the material world versus the kind of spiritual, uh, subtle world, subtle realities. And many people will be torn daily between these, pulled into the fear if they're listening to the mass media and worried about their livelihood and worried about the effects on their children's schooling and the effects on all the, the myriad of things in everyday life. But know that they need to pull up into a higher spiritual perspective and use this time to reflect and grow and see you know really look at their life um people's so we could almost look at um people's livelihood and selfish protection versus the greater good and service for all you know when people isolate, they're doing it for other people. And when they, they break those rules and think, oh, I don't care about everyone else, I'm just going to do this. That's kind of the, this, this um, conflict, if you like, between spirituality and or between the higher spiritual vibrations and the lower, more dense vibrations of matter. And, you know, those people who are part of that new group of world servers, it's part of our responsibility to every time we get pulled into those dents of fear, doubt, anxiety, anger, thought forms, to lift our energy up into the higher centers, up into the, the greater understanding and know that this is all happening for the highest good of all. And the sooner we can understand why, um, the better and then we can help those who are being pulled into the fear and help to pull their vibration and their energy up and that's how we serve that's our role and we are seeing 
fabulous examples of so many people stepping up, stepping into their light. There's so much free information on the internet. So many um, people are embracing meditative techniques. They're embracing energy techniques. People are learning Qigong and yoga. They're learning about their immune system. They're learning about their physical body, about caring for themselves. They're working out issues among in, in their families. They're caring for the community. There's so much good spiritual work going on as a result of this crisis we find ourselves in. So this new moon, and I take this from Philip Lindsay's um, newsletter um, that came out this morning. He said this new moon is aided by a conjunction with Uranus, the revolutionary planet. Okay, he says um, Uranus brings an understanding of the causes of things as they are and a desire to change the old or order and an orientation toward the new. So he says the main configuration in the new moon chart is the sun, moon, and Uranus in Taurus, all square to Saturn and Aquarius, the sign that Uranus rules. So this dynamic point of tension at the new moon fosters a radical breaking away from tradition, from tradition, this is Saturn, by the revolutionary forces of Uranus, utilizing the progressive energies of that of Aquarius, that energy that is building and coming in more and more. And he says, interesting, Uranus and Taurus are both connected to money. Hence, um, a mate and money uh, is is associated with the sign of Capricorn that we're in now. So, <clears throat> sorry that the um, the configuration is is being in. Hence, a major revolution. In the financial system is predicted um, whilst not only money but maybe the cultivation of a better global system of human values to do with money and resources and the sharing the more equal distribution and sharing of money and resources um, so that presence of, of Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn has been destroying the old to make way for the new. So um, another quote from Philip's newsletter this morning, he says, the task of Uranus hidden in the depths is to awaken and evoke the intuitive response of Taurus and an ever increasing light until such time that full illumination is achieved and also the development of the spiritual consciousness, substituting these higher soul aspects for the lower form reactions. So this is this lifting up of this, of this energy. Um, and Saturn is the ruler of the third ray of creative or active intelligence. And this is the major ray of money and the only ray to pour through Libra, the balancing. The main sign of money ruled Libra is esoteric, the esoteric ruler, uh, sorry, Uranus is the esoteric ruler of Libra. Um, so, and in Aquarius, we see the more, you know, pouring out the waters for the thirsty, the more even distribution of resources and money. Um, moving on, Taurus is an earth sign. And the new moon gives us the opportunity to change our relationship with our home, with our planet Earth, and to cherish our home. And we're seeing quite rapid healing in the natural world as a result of, of everybody staying home. Um, because we've changed the way we're living, we've changed our relationship to our beautiful planet. And many people have found time to connect with nature over this kind of lockdown period. And certainly to notice and appreciate in the, in the UK, the beautiful changes of spring, that quite often we're too busy running around involved in our everyday lives to notice. And this has been one of the really nice aspects of, of the quieter, more peaceful life that this lockdown time is bringing to our awareness. More people are walking and cycling. There are fewer cars and it's quieter. 
there are no airplanes polluting the Earth's atmosphere. The crisis has created a perfect opportunity to slow down, to reflect, as the many distractions and addictions that we normally use to avoid thinking about where we are and how we're living and if it's the best expression, if it's true to our values, um, we usually avoid sitting down and reflecting on these bigger issues, if at all possible, because they're difficult and they require change. The new moon is therefore a golden opportunity to look at your own life and make decisions about how you want, how you want to live when we emerge from this current crisis. What do you want to keep from your old way of living? What do you want to retain? And what do you want to change and do differently? And this is both individually and collectively. And I know for me, you know, it's been a profound time and I have seen ways of changing my life that I, I couldn't see before to that illumination, that Taurus understanding is already coming through. Now, people are amazingly adaptable. Mankind, that's one of the reasons we survive is we are so adaptable. And, you know, this crisis has brought out so many examples of people making the best of situations, really digging deep to find the qualities of courage, strength, resourcefulness for their own personal challenges, as well as looking after others. Look at the response um, worldwide to Captain Tom. Okay, the beloved 99 year old, well, he's going to be 100. Um, not too long, who's raised over 27 million for the NHS when he, his aim was to raise a thousand pounds by doing a hundred laps of his garden with his Zimmer frame uh, before his 100th birthday. And he's captured the hearts and people, even people, a lot of people financially, um, they've given you know, the money has flowed from their heart connection to this man who fought in World War II and really look, look what he has been able to achieve. So the Taurus new moon is a perfect time to sit and reflect and contemplate the way we live, to look at our relationship to the earth, to um, take time to see the truth, to allow time for that illumination, for what is right and good and true for you moving forward and that's what this next two weeks especially you will be helped by these higher energies in that sort of pondering and contemplation change is never easy no nope. it's messy and it's muddy and it's difficult but remember the analogy of the lotus now the lotus symbolizes the spiritual path of all individuals and of mankind as a whole so the lotus from the muddy depths of darkness, the lotus seeds grow and gradually push their way up through the depths and the murky waters of the emotional nature till it eventually emerges into the light. And in response to that illumination, that understanding, that light that comes through the mind, the petals slowly start to open one by one as we learn and grow and develop spiritually until eventually all of those petals open and the jewel at the center of the lotus is revealed is the true nature of man. So remember, you know, from that muddy, murky water came this perfect, this beautiful lotus flower with this jewel in the center. And that is where we are. We will emerge so this process is accelerated in times of great challenge. And as there's much suggestion that this current crisis may be a time when we are in the midst of this acceleration. And maybe, like I said, in the midst of a massive group initiation, especially facilitated by the incoming seventh ray. So the seventh ray governs communication and especially the internet and its role in bringing people together and organizing human life and communication and freedom of speech. Look at how the social media and the internet have kept people connected despite physical isolation. 
um, seventh ray rules pranic or subtle energy and facilitates a vast pouring in of supportive energy to help mankind spiritualize matter and move from our old way of being to a new way of living. So we have the opportunity to live in a way that cares for our planet, that brings a fairer distribution of wealth and resources, that builds a society where the values of care and compassion and looking after your fellow man and the vulnerable are an inherent part of how we live, where we slow down, where we find ways to um, keep the, the money energy flowing that don't compromise our truest values we stay grounded in what's important witness the vast outpourings of health advice people are becoming the ideas of energy and subtle energy and prana and chi and your immune system and alternative ways of looking at your health and supporting your health are becoming quite commonplace. Um, people are opening up to meditation during this time. Families are meditating. They're doing yoga together. They're doing qigong, chai gi, tai chi. They're opening up to new paradigms of health. So there's great synthesis going on and seventh ray is about the synthesis, bringing families and communities and nations together. And we've witnessed a sharing of resources, of support and information between nations, between scientists, between medical people from countries who are further along on the virus with the response to this virus to help countries that are, are behind in terms of the numbers. We are very aware that this is a world crisis affecting all of humanity and that no one is unaffected. We are in this together. And the beautiful thing is that we've never been more aware of our togetherness. And that's part of the illumination, I am sure. I'm going to leave that. I'm sure you've got lots of questions and thoughts buzzing and I've covered a lot of information there. Um, given you a lot to think about. But what I would like to do now is to do our group meditation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a picture on the screen so that I don't distract you as much um, and take you through this meditation. So I would like to begin um, uh, in a group meditation, the power of the group and the new moon and the full moon are times of the lunar cycle that are particularly potent for group meditation. You, we can have even more effect at the new moon and at the full moon than at any other time in the cycle. So I would like to start with the affirmation of love, which will bring us into our heart centers and bring our hearts together in, in common intention. So just let me find the right screen. Uh -huh. So on your screen, this is the affirmation of love taken from the Alice Bailey teachings. So what I would like to do um, is you can either say it out loud or say it quietly to yourself. But the idea is that we're saying it together. Now, if you're joining this recording from YouTube, it doesn't matter when you join the group time and space don't exist when we work in meditation so if you're joining the recording it's as if you're here with us right here and now so let's repeat uh, the affirmation of love in the center of all love i stand from that center i the soul will outward move from that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. So make yourself comfortable. You want to be sitting upright, 
um, but not rigid. Your back supported. Uh, uncross your legs, feet on the floor, and just let your hands rest gently in your lap. I want you to close your eyes. And before we begin, I just would like to connect and ground our energy in the energy of the earth. So I want you to imagine that you are sending a connection either through your feet or through the base of your spine, like you're sending roots right down deep into the earth. So you are connecting with her energy. And now I want you to just have the intention that we are coming together as a group, united in our intention, working with the heart and the higher aspects of all of us. I'd like to bring you into the present moment. We do this by focusing on the senses. So just be aware of your body sitting in the chair. Be aware of the clothes on your skin. Take your awareness to the sounds in this moment and just let them come in. Just notice. And now I want you to take that awareness to your breath. So just notice the breath as it comes into your body. Notice the breath as it leaves. And just keep a gentle focus on the breath and feel your body beginning to relax. You can imagine that breath opening a channel right down through the very center of you so that with each breath you breathe a little deeper. Now keep a gentle focus on the breath and you will find it will take you down into a quiet place within you. your mind becomes distracted, as soon as you realize, just come back to the breath. And we come back with an attitude of loving kindness. The distraction doesn't matter. What matters is the coming back to the breath. Continue to focus on the breath, allowing the thoughts to simply pass through your mind. And with this focus on the breath, just come into the stillness. I want you to take your focus to the center of your chest. And as you breathe in, I want you to imagine that you're breathing into your heart center. You're gently opening a space between the breastbone and the spine, deep in the chest.
I want you to imagine your heart is filling with light and with love. Now I want you to allow your heart to fill with gratitude. Gratitude for the blessings in your life, as this will open the heart. Now imagine that you are connecting through your heart with your soul, your higher self, the highest aspect of your being. And I want you to imagine that Light is pouring down from your higher self, down through the crown of your head. And this light can be white, pure white light, or it can be a gold light, golden light, or some people resonate with violet purple, whichever suits you. And it's pouring in down through the crown of your head and down through the major energy centers or chakras associated with the midline of your body. Imagine that your heart center is a vessel that receives this light and distributes it throughout your body. So imagine your whole physical body now is filling with this purifying, cleansing, healing light. It is strengthening your immune system, calming your emotions, bringing clarity to your mind. And just fill your whole body with light. Every cell is filled with light. Lifting your vibration. Allow this light now to flow out into the etheric body or the aura energy field that surrounds your body. And this energy field can go out as far as about three feet around your body. So just allow the light to radiate out. It's pouring down through the crown into your heart and radiating out to fill your whole being with light. Now I want you to imagine that this light and love are flowing out in to fill your home and touch all who reside there, all living beings. And now I want you to imagine it's flowing out into the street in which you live. and out into your community. Now let it flow out to fill the whole of the town or city in which you live. And then to fill the whole of the nation in which you live. Now 
I want you to imagine that this light is connecting with all the members of this group meditation present here today and those who listen to the recording. And as a group now, we allow this light and this love to flow out and fill the whole of this part of the world. The whole of this hemisphere. And now allow it to encompass the whole of the planet. Continue allowing the light to pour down through your crown into your heart and distribute out, radiating out. Now imagine you can see the whole of our planet from space. You're looking down and you can see it surrounded by light. You can see this light healing and restoring the balance in nature. Healing our planet. The air is clean and fresh. The water is pure and clear. We have a healthy ozone layer. See all the animal and plant life flourishing and mankind in beautiful connection with all other living beings on this planet. Now see the light that surrounds our planet flowing down into the hearts and minds of all men. All mankind, all men and women. Bringing peace, goodwill, and right relations between all of mankind. Bringing illumination and understanding. Lifting our awareness. Lifting the collective consciousness. Lifting the vibration of all. so that we can take this opportunity to envisage a life where we live in peace and in harmony with all. So just keep holding this vision. See people responding in their own unique way to the light and the love, and the will to good. See them following their intuitive guidance in their own spiritual paths, making their own unique contribution to the world. and this wonderful support of energy of the Taurus new moon, that revolutionary energy of Uranus. Hold this energy and let it radiate out. Mm. 
May I see lights coming on all over the planet. See all the groups of people coming together in meditations such as this. Till the whole planet is filled with these sparks of light, pouring energy up into that aura surrounding the planet and that energy pours down into the hearts and minds of all. See people waking up to the realization that we are spiritual beings, having a human experience. To know that we are one. Just hold the energy and let it radiate out for a few more moments. This purifying, cleansing, healing, unifying energy of love and light and the will to good. And now I invite you to gently open your eyes and on your screen, you'll see the words of the great invocation. And I invite you to repeat this silently or out loud. And we're going to pause between each stan stanza just to imagine the words playing out. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. 
and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Ooh. Now slowly open your eyes and just coming back to an awareness of yourself in the room. Namaste. I'm going to pause the recording now and allow you to go and clap for the NHS and then we'll come back just after eight o'clock and if you have any questions or comments um, there'll be an opportunity then. So I'll see you soon. Well, welcome back. Um, what we'll do for the question and uh, answer or if you've got comments or anything to add, um, I've got you all unmuted. Um, if you want to speak, just kind of raise your hand and um, then just unmute your um, microphone. So has anyone got any questions. I haven't got Ted with me so I can do my best on the esoteric astrology um, answers but there might be people here who know more than me I suspect. So please feel free you know if you've got something to add. Um, that's what it's all about. So has anybody got uh, any comments, any questions, any reflections on, on this new moon time? You all look stunned. <laughs> Yeah, Philip. Oh, hang on. Go. Oh, yeah, I was just commenting you mentioned about you think this time might be a time of mass initiation. Could, mm. could you expand on that or Okay, yeah, I can I can do my best. Okay. Um the idea is that um crisis or, or world events that affect the whole of humanity like this. Often, if you were to look at the big picture, um, it's designed to move people quite quickly in an accelerated forward on their spiritual development. And so I see um, the fact that this virus <clears throat> is affecting people up in the very top of their chest, throat area. This is all um, the, the lungs and the heart are associated, the lungs are associated with heart opening. And to me, um, it's very much um, lifting people up into those higher qualities of the heart, like compassion, like caring, like forgiveness, like gratitude. Um, and so I think what I mean, I don't know the astrology, but there's a lot of indication in the chart. I was talking to Ted about this the other day, and Philip Lindsay mentions it in his newsletter, and um, Marvin mentions in his newsletter the idea that this might be um, the catalyst for a major transformation and therefore an initiation into a higher vibrational energy for a lot of people. And something that I think I might do a talk on next week, which would expand on this energy, is some of um, the work looking at um, 
the idea that about 15% of humanity, if they can lift their vibration up to a certain level, they can raise the vibration of the other 85% of humanity, if you like. So that's um, a, a spiritual responsibility that many souls are stepping into. Um, and initiations going forward in Aquarius will not so much be individual initiations as they've been in the past, but group initiations. And of course, Capricorn, the sign where all this is kicked off, is the sign of initiation. It's reaching the top of the mountain, that point of initiation where you lift up into that higher energy. Um, so does that, does that help? Oh, that's something. Yeah. Um, if, if I could ask another question, is it possible? Yeah, go for uh, it. Um, do you think that's linked in? I mean, I say Bailey wrote about the externalization of the hierarchy and the reappearance of the world teacher. Do you think that could be linked? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of suggestion. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a massive sort of spiritual uh, event in higher realms in 2025, as you're aware of. And the idea is that especially it was written from now till then, we're in the preparatory time for that. So I guess if these higher end, for these higher energies to come down, you know, for the reappearance of the Christ or the externalization, of these higher energies, um, we have to be prepared. So there has to be a certain number of humanity lift their vibration and their consciousness to a point where we are responsive, we are uh, open to those energies. So yes, yes. Thank you, yeah. Lovely. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on this sort of area? Um, I think I'll expand a bit more on this maybe next week and then I'm going to see if Ted can or we'll get Ted back to speak or definitely not next Thursday but Thursday after is the WESAC festival at the time we have screw meditation so we'll definitely be doing a talk on that and looking a bit more detail at understanding the energies of WESAC um, because it is like I say, it's a spiritual, the most important spiritual time of the year um, throughout the world. It's celebrated, uh, not so not so well known in the West, although becoming more well known um, certainly in, in the East. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Is there anything today that touched the nerve, or you've got a comment about your own personal experience? Um, you all look quite stunned. Has the new moon been a bit tough? <laughs> it can be. <laughs> Sometimes these, uh, the new moon and the full moon, it, 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 because we are ourselves personally going through um, challenging times, sometimes there is a sort of a drawing in and uh, especially if you're naturally introverted, I think it's a time where intuitively you want to just draw in and, and work on the things that, that you do. Um, I'll pose a question to the group uh, and answer if you want to and I can, I can unmute you. Um, are there things about your life that you are coming to the decision, actually, no, this needs to change, moving them out of lockdown, get back to a semblance of normal life? I want this to change my life, definitely. I, I'm already looking at changes I want to escape. Or do you just want life to go back to how it was? Yeah? Some of you are nodding, no? Yeah, Michael, let me unmute you. I, I did a quick poll with the people that I work with, because I'm, I'm part of a team of about 40. And about five people said, this is better. Yeah. This way of working is actually better, which I found very interesting. Yeah. And lots of other people had said, I mean, for all of us, I think it's a time of enforced reflection. But mm. in many ways, that's not actually a bad thing, because I no. think, we would all say life was streaming by far too quickly 
and now we've had a, few, a bit of time to think. So I think this particular cloud does have a silver lining. I would agree. I would agree. Not everyone likes reflection. <laughs> People don't like shining a light into the darkness and seeing what's there. That's why it I takes said it's courage. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Is anybody else? Um, Philip, did you have something else to say? Oh, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I think that uh, I, really, I think it links in what we said. I don't really want things to go back to normal. Normal no. wasn't good, you know. Like we're not no. sharing the world's resources, and mm. there's great inequality in the world. Um, yeah, and I think you, you know we we've all got a lot to be grateful for, and we're you know even if we are being challenged financially yeah. and resource wise at the moment, compared to a lot of the world you know, we are still extremely blessed. And so are we prepared um, to go without holidays abroad and fly, you know, expecting um, that we fly to places for a holiday every year? Are we prepared to do without our cars and walk or cycle? Are we prepared? Do you know what I mean? You've really got to, you've really got to ask yourself, am I prepared to make these changes? Um, and, it's a nice idea, but we've got to look at the reality, the reality, you know, am I prepared to do that? And I think that you're right. Like Michael said, this enforced sort of time of reflection, some people will spend the whole of lockdown drunk and won't want to go there at all. You know, <laughs> um, I was quite amazed because I had been in isolation for so long. I hadn't been to the supermarket. And when I was going around the supermarket, the number of trolleys that were half full of alcohol. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is how some people will deal with yeah. the isolation with lockdown. And that's fine. Um, because, the, you know, there is a, no, don't want to go there. This is, this is the really tough stuff. But I, I think, and, and Ted alluded to this last um, week, we need to do this. And if we don't, either this virus or something else, something will happen that forces us yeah. to. It will come back. It will revisit. Um, we don't really have a choice. So those people who are aware or who um, are sort of awake enough to look at this, to be able to lift up and look at this from a higher perspective, really have a responsibility to help those who are being pulled down into that darker, deeper, murkier uh, vibration of fear. Um, and I'll, I think I will, I'll talk about this next week about how, yeah. you know, the different levels of vibrations and if you can lift your vibration up into love, up into the higher heart qualities, how that can lift the vibration of all. It's not just an individual. You don't just benefit yourself. Everybody does. Um, so I think that sounds like the, I was wondering earlier today, this will be the Taurus illumination thing. I was thinking, what am I going to talk about next week? Oh, it'll come. So there you go. It's come. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Is anybody else I'm looking around? Oh, Jamie, let me unmute you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's Tracy, actually, not Jamie. Oh. It's my son's iPad. <laughs> That's fine. Hi, Tracy. Hi. This is Jamie. My first Zoom, and I've really enjoyed it. Oh, Love good. But yes, I work in a supermarket, and you're absolutely right about the alcohol sales. They have shot through the roof. Mm. Uh, I haven't felt any fear at all through all this. Okay. I was a bit weird, you know, not feeling fear. I, I do feel that this is happening for a reason. and. Um, I'm actually loving it. Yeah, yeah. Snap. <laughs> I'm the same. It, this this suits me. It's yeah. Suits me very well. So, um, yeah, I'm actually really enjoying it. <laughs> and that's fine. You know, it, um, 
that's that's good because that means that you're you're and probably you're not are you avoiding the media are you avoiding being pulled in um i have been watching some news but i'm actually um it confuses me i think there's a lot of mixed messages mm. in the news and i'm not believing a lot of uh, the information mm. that's coming out so oh. that's that's beautiful because that's the Taurus. That's that discrimination, that discerning truth from falsehood. Ted did an astrology talk about this last week, and he was saying that um, you know this virus has been kicked off by the conjunction between Saturn and Pluto, but about actually at um, the summer solstice, so um, middle of June. Um, we get Neptune going retrograde, which will bring, we'll suddenly understand, it will bring almost enlightenment on the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. And I think there'll, there'll be a settling down of all this misinformation. Do you believe this conspiracy theory? Do you believe that? Do you believe this? Do you just go, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to go and sit in the sun. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it is interesting um, looking at it from, I, I think the, the bigger picture you can look at it from, um, the better. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen it as, as a wonderful opportunity to work in a different way, mm -hmm. um, to have a break, yeah. uh, to have some time. And, uh, but, but a, a lot of people don't like it. I know with the supermarket thing, um, in New Zealand, two bottles of alcohol per shop, <laughs> which, uh, so, you know, different countries are dealing with it differently. So they're not allowed to just um, spend the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Any more questions, comments? No. No. Okay. Well, I think we'll um, finish there. Um, I hope that that some of that was useful, and uh, we're still in the energy of the Taurus new moon after all the days. So that's you know, if you've got the opportunity just to give yourself a day of retreat, just say, right, okay, I'm not, you know, maybe Saturday, maybe tomorrow, depending what your time table is like. I'm actually not going to do any work on Saturday. I'm just going to let that be a day where I open up. And I do this sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I, you just let the day evolve as it does. And you just almost you're almost speaking to your soul your higher self and say this is a day i will listen i will spend the whole day open i'll start the day with meditation and i will do a lot of meditation and just sitting in nature and just simply being and i am open maybe you do some writing maybe you know people use different methods maybe they use cards or tarot or whatever they use to help um, to get in touch with their intuitive self and just just give yourself a day a retreat so that anything that um, for you that needs to come for you has an opportunity um, and that way it won't wake you up in the middle of the night at three in the morning to be knocking on the say well, we've got something to sort out here because you've actually made time to listen um, so you know just Sometimes just almost have, I almost have an arrangement with my soul and say, do you what? let me get that stuff done I have to get done tomorrow in normal everyday life. Saturday, I'm all yours. And it works. It really works. It's a powerful thing to do. And it's amazing. You just, you, I wake up and it's just all going on. It's, it becomes quite an amazing experience. So you can always do that. And the new moon is a perfect time to do that. So there's food for thought. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your energy and your contribution. Um, namaste. And we'll see you next week. The recording, I'll send you a copy um, of the YouTube link tomorrow. Take care. Mm -hmm.